for the ages of all ages. Amen. This gospel is read to us a couple weeks ago, read to us today, and we often read the gospel of the blessing of the multitudes. And every time we read it, we are reminded of the, the grace and the abundance that God gives in various ways. For some people, the abundance can only be noticed in a physical abundance, like there has to be a lot of something to say, oh, God has given us. For others, it is the sense of blessing and presence of God within the circumstances and difficulties of their life that makes them acknowledge that God is giving an abundance. The second type of people are usually going to be more content in life and happier because they were going to recognize at all times that regardless of the material presence of blessing or abundance, God is there. And that's why from the beginning, it is known, as it says in Isaiah, that He would be, he would be named Emmanuel, which means God with us. This is the greatest blessing. And yet, the Lord, in spite of that, sees that we need to be reminded of thanksgiving. And that's why even when He Himself, who does all things, who creates things out of nothing, gave thanks before blessing the barley loaves and the fish that were given to Him, to bless and give to the people. The Lord is giving us a simple reminder, and it's advice, but it's also encouragement to know that in thanksgiving, when we give thanks at all things and all times, we truly will receive a sense of peace or a certainty that God is there despite the lack or the difficulties that may surround us. Now even the disciples here, after the Lord had finished and everybody ate in abundance, they ate as much as fish and bread as they wanted to eat. The Lord didn't just say, okay, let's go home. He said to each disciple, fill the 12 baskets with the fragments that have, that have fallen. Whatever is left over, fill it. The Lord wasn't telling us simply to fill it because we don't want to waste any food. That's true, of course. And it's not just so that it's a reminder. That is true also. But the Lord wants every disciple to pick up his, his basket, filled with fish and bread, from just five little loaves and two small fish, that everyone may go back to wherever they came from, and the disciples following and say, look, this is what the Lord does. He gives us abundance. And that's why St. Paul spoke about that in Ephesians 3, when he said, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, this is the work of God in, in our lives. Every one of us needs to train ourselves because the world we live in is a world that is good at critiquing or judging or complaining. In society, look at the news you watch every day or look at, there's constant bombardment of uh, bad news or bad information or just bad things in general. But there are those in the midst of that darkness who like to pierce the darkness with some light and say, well, here's some good news for you. Here's a cup of fresh cold water for you. Here's a, some food to refresh you. The Lord tells us, be like that. Carry your basket and show it to the people. Now, this does not mean to walk around showing off to the people because the disciples are not called to take up their baskets and show off. Because what is there to show off? Was it the Lord? Was it the disciples who, who brought this fish? Was it the disciples who brought this bread? No, it wasn't. We all know very well that had it not been for the Lord's blessing upon this bread and this fish, the disciples would have empty baskets to go home with. They wouldn't have baskets to go home with to begin with. So there's nothing to show off. It's to give glory to God in all things. That I, the broken, I, the weak, I who may have nothing in and of myself has been given by God. Greater things than physical or material possession, but have been given the peace that surpasses understanding, have been given faith. That's why St. Paul praises those who are rich in faith. St. James praises those who are rich in faith. The Lord says, begin by admitting your poverty in spirit, that regardless of what material I may have, we are poor without Christ. And that is the beginning of being enriched and walking around with a full basket. The full basket will not be something necessarily visible to those around you as a physical basket but it will be the visible attributes or the traits of your gentle, quiet spirit, your thanksgiving in good times and bad, your uh, humility in spite of adversity, 
your boldness in the face of adversity. Uh, and you name it. Every one of you knows what are the things you have potential to glorify God in. Whether it is your workplace, in your home, in your with your family, with your friends, at school, wherever it may be. Every one of us has been given the potential by the grace of God that He may accomplish in us above all that we ask or think. These are the twelve baskets and these are the fragments that the disciples took up to show to the world that it's not of them but of Him. This is what you want to attain one day. This is what will give you the greatest satisfaction. More than any bread or fish you could ever eat. The satisfaction of knowing that you're glorifying God day to day through your actions and deeds and words. We need to pray for that for each and every one of us and for this whole world, for the salvation of everyone, that everyone may realize that there's a basket that's being filled by God daily. It says also that the Lord daily loads us with benefits. The Lord daily loads us with benefits. Again, these benefits are beyond the physical and the material. That's why the Lord never focused on that. And that's why in the yesterday's Vespers, when they came and asked the Lord, could you heal this son of mine and this and that? He said, unless you see, unless you see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. And sure enough, some people saw the loaves and the fish in abundance and still didn't believe. Or they just followed for the sake of the barley and the fish. The Lord says, go beyond this. As, transcend the level of bread and fish. The Lord didn't come and die on the cross to give us bread and fish. The Lord died on the cross to give us everlasting life. And that's why He's going to remind us and say, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. The fish and the bread are details. Your eternal life is what counts. And how what we do with the life we have here, the sojourn we have here now, in preparation for inheriting that eternal life, this is what counts. So the church is reminding us this regularly through this gospel. The Lord and the Spirit reminding us, saying, He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Let us empty the baskets of the things that are alien to God's purity. That's why the, the mystery and the sacrament of repentance and confession is such a valuable tool to the church's children. It's not meant to be a burden. Many people are seeking to receive the Eucharist, which is wonderful, and the mysteries of the church. Excellent. Continue seeking and continue coming forth worthy or making your efforts to say, Lord, make us worthy, offering your repentance and your broken spirit, your broken heart. But offer that repentance and that confession. Use to your advantage the mystery of repentance and confession. Use it regularly. Use it regularly. The, the church is at your disposal for this. Those of you who haven't had an opportunity to conf confess in a while, maybe since the pandemic started, or in the past months, or years, whatever it may be, whoever is watching at home, regardless, use this to your advantage. Call up your, your, your spiritual father, your, your confessional father, ask for an appointment, even it's by phone. Two, three minutes, five minutes, just empty out the things that are burdening you. Empty that basket, that it, the Lord may replace it with fresh water with His Spirit to renew you and strengthen you and give you that power to, to live that life of thanksgiving, that your basket may be filled, up, filled with His grace to show it to the world that He be glorified in your life and everywhere. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are